Agents are useless. Why should I use something like Autogen when I can code this myself? I hear this a lot and I know exactly where you're coming from. So today, let's look at some agentic design patterns which will completely change the way you work with AI. Let's dive right in. Let's start with something we should all be able to relate with. Let's try and replace a form we have in our app with a chatbot. So the user will be able to create and modify stuff within our app using natural language. So here's how it would work. Let's assume we already have some kind of a conversational bot. Let's wrap it up and call it an agent. Ah yes, we can literally wrap up any piece of code as an agent. Most of the times. More on that later. Okay, so now we have a chatbot agent. Now how would it know what questions to ask the user to fill the form up? Sure, we could shove all the fields we need to ask in its system prompt. That might work, but it's likely that the chatbot might lose the conversation if it drags on for too long or if the form ends up being a bit complex. Yeah, agents can be really stupid at times. What? I'm not stupid. I'm not. You know what would be a better idea? Bringing in another agent whose sole purpose is form tracking. So each message that the user enters will be forwarded to our form agent, which calculates and keeps track of all the fields in its memory. It can use this memory to figure out what fields are pending and nudge the chatbot agent to ask those questions. It's important to note that the form agent doesn't really need to follow the entire conversation. It's just looking at a subset of the conversation at any given time. So no context overflows and no getting lost. This is called the two agent pattern. The goal here is to delegate some responsibility from a primary agent to a secondary one. Then we can make the pair have internal conversations to provide more accurate or aligned answers. But hold on, we've got more. Let's look at another example. And of course, we have yet another chatbot. I'm sorry, chatbots are like the only relatable examples I can think of. This time we have a chatbot which uses a knowledge database to answer end user questions. Now it's important for our chatbot to have a very high degree of accuracy. Otherwise, you'll wind up like the airline which had to pay up cause its stupid agent miscoded some policies. Oh, will you shut up? So how can you minimize such blunders? The two agent pattern to the rescue. Before letting the chatbot agent reply to the user, pass the potential response to a verifier agent. This agent would first check if the generation is based on the extracted chunks or not. That is, it will perform a groundedness check. Next, it can also confirm if the answer is relevant to the question asked. A relevance check. Based on its analysis, it can tell our chatbot to retry or even mark certain chunks as irrelevant. This goes on till we have an accurate answer to send to the end user. Just like in the previous example, it's important to remember that the verifier agent isn't really going through the entire conversation. It could, but it probably shouldn't. It's just looking at the last interaction, so it's unlikely for it to get confused as well. This is a specific implementation of the two agent pattern and it's called reflection. And like I said previously, the entire goal here is to provide the primary agent with feedback to help it do its job better. But wait a minute, this begs an important question. Is the reflection or companion agent always AI driven? Well, in the form agent's example where we were replacing a form with a chatbot, yeah, we would need an LLM to extract fields and their values from a user's message. However, the task of figuring out which fields are still pending can be done with a simple JSON schema validator. And it doesn't need to stop you. If you're certain that your previous agent will spit out structured output like JSON, your reflector or secondary agent can be completely deterministic and not use AI at all. I know I kind of dragged this one out a bit, but hey, it's really important to understand that agents are a lot more than just LLMs and prompt templates. You can literally do whatever you want with them. I have no idea why I just winked at that. I will be making a hands-on video on what I think agents are and implement all the patterns that we've been talking about. So you better make sure you're subscribed or else your agents will not work. I am not kidding. And by the way, if it wasn't clear already, agentic frameworks like Origin help you compose these patterns without forcing you to implement all the conversational plumbing. Time to move on to the next pattern. Some problems just cannot be solved by a single LLM call. 
Sometimes you need a workflow. Let's take an example. The process to make a YouTube video is pretty hard. It takes a lot of effort. And what do you get in return? Nothing. Not even a single like or subscribe. I mean, it's right there. And you clearly like this video. You made it this far. But did you like it? No, you didn't. Because nobody cares. Nobody gives a damn about your dead butt. Damn it. Do like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Man, we need to cut this part out. I think I'm gonna give somebody a stroke. So where were we? YouTube. There are three things I do before I start working on a video idea. First, I do some research. It's important to be up to date with the latest facts and opinions you agree and disagree with. Next, I identify the most important points I wanna cover in my video. And finally, I make a storyline to weave all of it together. This can be delegated to AI. One agent for each step. Pretty straightforward. This is called the sequential chat pattern. These agents aren't exactly conversing. You simply take the output of one step and feed it to the next. Yeah, it's just prompt chaining. You don't really need agents for this, but eventually you realize that each step can be improved. For example, we can potentially add a reflection agent to the second step to make sure that the talking points are always in line with what my audience desires. And not just that, the research step could be way more involved and turn out to be a sequential chat by itself. You see what we're doing here? We are identifying which steps or agents need improvement and swapping them out with other patterns. This is the one point you absolutely need to take home. Agents are composable. They have a standard API. So when you solve a use case using the two agent pattern to the outside world, it still behaves as a single agent. So now we can start with tiny agents which do one task and do them really well and progressively evolve it into this powerful machinery which can take on complex problems. I cannot stress how important this is. The final pattern left to discuss is what people usually think of when they hear the word agents, the group chat pattern. Let's say we're building a code chatbot, something like GitHub Copilot chat. The user could ask us questions around writing tests, explaining code in bugs, and maybe even writing code for a whole new feature. We could and should have different agents for all these use cases. But it's still a very difficult thing to model something this complex using the patterns that we've seen thus far. I mean, for a given question that a user may ask, how do we decide which agents need to be involved and in what sequence? You know what would be great? If agents could figure this out all by themselves. We could literally have a planner agent and let it talk to everyone else to figure out the best possible solution. Oh yeah, we're talking agent cooperation. This is interesting, right? Well, we'll talk more about it in the next video. Till then, check this out. I'll bet you like it. Like, share and subscribe if you found this video to be helpful. And don't forget, I am your tech bud. Here on YouTube and hopefully in real life. Bye-bye.